Welcome to EM Cases Rapid Reviews, where we review the take-home points from the EM Cases main episode podcasts so you can ace your exams and take stellar care of your patients. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Claridge, and welcome to another edition of Emergency Medicine Cases Rapid Review. Today, we're going to review the second half of oncologic emergencies. In part one, there were four important presentations, and we had looked at fever and shortness of breath. And today, we're going to focus on the confused patient and those who are in acute renal failure. An oncological patient with acute confusion, what's running through your head? Well, let's go through it. Let's break it down into things from inside the brain to things from outside the brain. The within the brain stuff could be brain lesions with surrounding edema or raised endocranial pressure for a variety of other reasons. So the stuff from outside, you don't want to forget hypercalcemia, as well as those with hyponatremia. And lastly, consider hyperviscosity syndrome. These are the causes that are closely associated with cancers, but also think of the regular non-cancer causes, you know, stuff like medications, infection, liver failure, and dehydration. Let's first talk about those patients with increased ICP and brain mets. Raised ICP can be caused by hydrocephalus, brain mets, bleeding, or an abscess in the brain. A non-contrast CT should show most symptomatic brain lesions. But keep in mind that a contrast CT may be needed to identify metastases. If the patient starts to present with signs of impeding brain herniation, intubate, hyperventilate to a PCO2 of 30, give either 3% hypertonic saline or mannitol, avoid any hypotension, and for those with METs and edema, give dexamethasone. There's not really any evidence for prophylactic anti-seizure medication for brain METs. All right, so let's keep moving through this differential and look at hypercalcemia. Up to one-third of patients with hypercalcemia will have a malignancy, and one-third of cancer patients will develop hypercalcemia. That's a pretty high number. Symptoms of hypercalcemia can easily be remembered by the saying, stones, moans, abdominal moans, and psychiatric groans. So you can get kidney stones with subsequent renal colic, as well as bone pain, abdominal symptoms like anorexia, constipation and pain, and finally, altered mental status. But also think about it in the older patient with a history of cancer, with generalized weakness, fatigue, and nonspecific symptoms. For the differential, keep it simple. There are two things we should consider. First is malignancy, and the most common type being multiple myeloma, lung, renal, and breast. The second is primary hyperparathyroidism. You can fire off a PTH, but it probably won't come back on your shift. For investigations, what test should we be ordering? An ECG can be helpful, and you can see a short QT. When discussing electrolytes, a question I want to know is at what level can you expect to see symptoms? And with calcium, a value of greater than 3 millimoles per liter and levels above 3.5 can cause severe symptoms. For the most part, you can rely on a total serum calcium level. But in cases of severe malnutrition where the albumin is super low and multiple myeloma patients with high serum protein, use a corrected calcium. So now you've got that calcium level. What do you want to do with it? First, you've got to restore the circulating volume. They can get quite dehydrated to the polyuria and vomiting, so they require several liters to get euvolemic. You're going to want to monitor the urine output. Make sure it's at least 100 cc's per hour. Second step are the bisphosphonates. This is usually reserved for those severe cases where the calcium level is above 3.5 and aggressive treatment is warranted. They take a while to work, so you have time to decide. And remember to use caution in renal failure. For severe cases and those non-responsive to hydration, consider calcitonin. The last ditch is hemodialysis, especially if they cannot tolerate fluid, like those with CHF or chronic renal failure. Furosemide is generally not recommended unless the patient has CHF or volume overload. Okay, so let's go back to some of the other causes and dive into the thick world of hyperviscosity syndrome. This can present with a classic triad of mucosal bleeding, visual changes, and altered mental status, all due to microcirculatory problems. This is either caused by an elevated white blood cells or severe hyperproteinemia, and usually occurs in the setting of Waldrostrom's microglobinemia, multiple myeloma, or acute leukemia. A clue to the diagnosis is that the lab sample is delayed due to the high sample viscosity, as well as relo formation in blood smears. So moving on to the kidneys. What causes of renal failure in cancer patients do we have to consider? We can break it down in the same way as we would with non-cancer patients. Pre-renal is common, things like vomiting, infection, hypercalcemia. For post-renal, pelvic masses causing a post-renal obstruction is also pretty common. 
Some renal causes are an infiltrating tumor, amyloidosis, and nephrotoxic drugs. And one to always keep in your mind is tumor lysis syndrome. So what is this? This is a result of rapid cell destruction and electrolyte and metabolic derangements that happen afterwards. Think of it in the setting of those undergoing chemo for lymphoma or leukemia. Everything from inside the cell goes out. So you get hyperkalemia, hyperphosphatemia, hypocalcemia, and severe renal failure. And this occurs from the uric acid that's contained in the DNA that blocks the microtubules. Treat the hyperkalemia first and get on the phone with nephrology to see about dialysis. Rasburicase can also be used. It's an enzyme that transforms uric acid into soluble allantoin. That brings us to our recap. For altered mental status, keep in mind the different causes. Break it down to those within the brain and those outside the brain. Remember hypercalcemia as an important cause. Treat with fluids, consider bisphosphonates, and calcitonin for severe cases. Renal failure is not too different than those non-cancer patients. But there are a few specific things to remember, including tumor lysis syndrome, where everything from inside the cell goes out. Treat the hyperkalemia and consider dialysis. The specific medication to remember here is rasburicase. All right, everyone. Thank you again for watching, and see you again next time.